After more than 11 years, Diablo is back with the fourth installment, Diablo 4, which showcased a return to a darker and more mature tune compared to its predecessor. On the technical side, Blizzard has harnessed the power of its proprietary engine to deliver visually stunning results, especially the lighting system, which is particularly evident in indoor environments and other atmospherically dim areas, where most lights are shadow casting and dynamic shadows play a crucial role in enhancing in the look of these places. Additionally, Diablo 4 impressed with its geometric density. Each place is brimming with intricate details, and this meticulous attention to detail adds depth and visual richness to the overall aesthetic of the game. But what about the PC version? Well, today in this video, we'll discuss the PC version and its issues, and as usual, take a look at each graphical setting, performance, and visual impact. So without any further ado, let's get going. Now Diablo 4 on PC is not a difficult game to run, if you have a mid-range or even a modern low-end PC, you'll get good performance, but the big issue here is the VRAM, the game has some serious memory management or leakage problem, and it's allocating a lot of VRAM that it actually needs, even for low textures like here, and sometimes when using ultra textures, the game allocates close to 8GB of VRAM, but it does not use it to load all textures. So if you have an 8GB GPU, I don't recommend using ultra textures, which by the way only available if you download the high resolution assets pack. Instead, use high with DLSS or FSR to avoid any problem or stuttering related to the VRAM usage. And here you can see the difference in quality between each texture option. Stuttering is another problem in Diablo 4, and VRAM is not always the cause of this, as you can see here. And this stuttering problem is more noticeable on hub areas. And I found that disabling this crossplay option from here mitigates the stuttering in these locations and improves the overall stability. For image quality, the game supports DLSS and FSR, but if you have an RTX GPU like me, you'll only get DLSS as an option. And DLSS here does a great job at eliminating shimmering and cleaning the image, compared to TAA. At the same time, it can lower the VRAM usage, so I really recommend using DLSS, especially if you're playing at 1440p or 4K with an 8GB GPU. The game also supports DLAA, and performance-wise, it costs around 8%. Let's move on to the graphic settings, starting with anisotropic filtering. Now, because of the top-down view of the game, anisotropic filtering doesn't really show any visual difference during normal gameplay, and going from off to even 16x can drop performance by around 2%. So here, just in case, leave this one at 16x. Next, we have shadow quality, and this one affects both the quality of sun shadows, like here, and dynamic shadows. And performance wise going from low to medium costs around 1% to high 7% and to highest 11%. So here I recommend high shadows. Moving on to dynamic shadows, as we discussed earlier, these shadows play a huge role in the game presentation, and performance-wise they cost around 5%. So unless you really need the extra 5% of performance, I highly recommend keeping dynamic shadows on. The visual enhancement they provide is well worth the modest impact on performance. Soft Shadow is another shadow setting, and this one enabled a penumbra effect where shadow details gradually diminished as they extend further from the objects casting them. And from what I have seen, this one does not affect sun shadows like here, it only affects dynamic shadows. And sometimes turning this one off can exhibit some visual artifacts within these shadows. And this setting has no performance impact, so I recommend keeping it on. Next, we have shader quality. This one controls the quality of various effects found on some surfaces, like here on the ground. Or here on this rock. And performance wise, going from low to even high costs around 1%. So, here I recommend high. 
Moving on to SSAO or Screen Space Ambient Occlusion. Now because of the top down view and dark tone of the game, it's hard to notice the difference between options from low to high, but performance wise it's one of the most demanding settings. Here going from off to low and medium costs around 4% and to high around 14%. However on some other areas it can be more demanding. Here you can see that with off I am getting around 97 FPS. And when switching to medium, the performance drops to 87 FPS. But switching to high destroys the performance and drops it to 58 FPS, which is a massive 40% cost from off. So right now, something is not right with SSAO when set to high, that's why I don't recommend going beyond low. For quality controls the quality of volumetric effects as you can see here, and performance wise going from low to medium costs around 1% and to high 6%. And this is another setting that can give you good performance without big visual impact, because here even low looks fine, that's why I recommend low or medium for quality. Clutter quality are just the density of ground clutter like grass and foliage as you can see here. Also using medium disabled shadows for clutter. And performance wise going from off to low costs 6% to medium 7% and to high and highest 20%. Here off and even medium offers good boost to performance but it drastically impacts the visuals. That's why I recommend the highest and turn this one down to medium only if you lower other settings and you still need the extra performance. Fur quality should adjust the density and quality of fur rendering, but it seems like this setting is currently broken, and I can't really see any visual or performance difference between low, medium and high. Water simulation quality adjusts the quality of water simulation effects, and visually the difference is not that significant between low and high, since low does not completely turn off these effects, and the performance is similar between the two options. However, in some other scenes like here, high can use more VRAM, that's why I recommend low water simulation quality. Anti-aliasing should control the quality of TAA, but I can't see any visual or performance difference between low and high. Geometric complexity controls the quality of meshes, which affect the level of detail of objects in the game, as you can see here. And performance wise going from low to even high costs around 3%, so here I recommend keeping this one at high. Terrain geometry detail is similar to the previous setting but for terrain details, and the performance hitch is also similar with 3% from low to high, so keep this one at high but if you need the extra performance you can lower it because it does not have a big impact on the visuals. Next we have physics quality and this is another setting that does not show any visual or performance difference. Here even when CPU bound the performance is similar and I've tried destroying some objects but I did not see any difference. So here I recommend low to stay on the safe side especially if you have a low end CPU. Particles quality adjusts the density of particles and this one can be noticeable with snow or rain particles like here or particles generated from special attacks and abilities like here. And performance wise going from low to even high with a lot of particles on screen costs around 1 or 2%, so here I recommend high. Reflection quality is next, and this one doesn't have a big visual or performance impact as you can see here, between low and high, so keep it at high. And for these reflections, the game relies on screen space reflections, however due to the top down view of the game, the screen space available for reflections is often limited, and as a result reflections may appear incomplete or inaccurate in most instances, and turning on SSR can drop performance by around 9%, so here I don't think the quality of reflections on display worth the performance hitch, that's why if you need more performance, this is one of the first settings you should consider turning off. Enabling this distortion setting shows a heat distortion effect which is noticeable around heat emission objects like here, and this setting has no performance impact, so if you like this effect, keep it on. 
and the last setting is low effects. This one when enabled diminishes the quantity and visual quality of particles produced by special abilities and attacks. And performance wise I did a test with the deep freeze ability and I saw around 2% difference between on and off. So I would say keep this one off, however if you encounter performance drops during intense combat scenarios I recommend turning this one on. Now based on everything we saw so far, these are my recommended settings. Let's now quickly compare optimized settings with Ultra Preset at 1440p but with 125% resolution scaling on both sides. Here we can see around 34% boost to performance by going from Ultra Preset to optimized settings. Overall, in comparison to many recent PC versions and ports, Diablo 4 stands out as an excellent example. The game offers a wide range of graphical settings to tweak and it delivers good performance and visually it looks great, especially the lighting system and the geometric complexity. However, Diablo 4 is not without its flaws, VRAM related issues and some occasional stuttering can sometimes ruin the experience. And in terms of performance, SSAO, shadow quality, clutter quality and screen space reflections are the most demanding settings and adjusting these settings should help improve the game's performance. And that's it for this one, thank you so much for watching and for your time, if you enjoyed the video leave a like and if not leave a dislike, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for future videos and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.